Hello everyone, and thank you all so much for joining us on our weekly Wednesday webinar. Today I am joined by our awesome managing attorney, Ruby Powers, and we are here to discuss the K-1 visa, also known as the 90-day visa, the fiance visa. It's referred to as multiple things. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's the, the TV show, the 90-day, whatever it's called, but um, that's probably where people think that. <laughs> um, and then just some background info on our attorney. She is well-rounded. She was licensed in 2008. She founded her firm back in 2009 and is a board-certified immigration and nationality attorney. So she has a lot of good information to give you guys, and I'll let her take over. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think the reason why this might have gotten popular um, recently is because of the TV show 90 Day Fiancé. Um, it's a little bit deceptive because it doesn't necessarily mean you uh, are only a fiance for 90 days or I don't know what you would think about with that 90 days. But basically, it just means that once you get to the U.S., you get married with you have to get married within 90 days or three months approximately. Um, OK, so today we're going to talk about what type of documents are needed. What what is a fiance application steps um, and, and things about filing petitions for if the fiance has children and um and, and any other fun facts we have so let's move on to the the overview okay so um you know the uh the fiance okay let's just let's this, this basically this is a thing if you you fall in love with someone that doesn't have a visa to come to the country this is an opportunity for that so you know maybe you're not ready to take the plunge of getting married right away maybe you want to make sure they can come here sort of look around see how this life will be like um this is that visa this is the one that gets them here and then you pretty much need to have already a strong relationship to know that it's going to work by the time you get here because there is that 90 days to, to get married within upon arrival but for some people choose this one over the being married in the foreign country and then bringing them over as a spouse. So this is only allowed for U.S. citizens to bring in fiancés. You can't do this for a legal permanent resident, can't bring in their fiancé. Um, and and this is, um, this is um, an opportunity for people to bring um your you know your your loved one that you're trying to to see if it's a good fit um and and go move forward so um anyway when you have to do the process um with the i-129f we'll, we'll get in that in a second um and then you make it goes through the mvc and then you have a visa appointment then you bring them here and then you get you get married so um that's the the short the short answer and the other thing is the children of the k1 that's the visa it's called k1 um are allowed to bring in um their their children which will once married will be the like stepchildren um, of the u.s citizen so um going back to the i-129 f is the form and um the they must you must be able to show that you're legally able to marry um in the future what you do is you write an affidavit and you say i'm able, legally able to marry and i want to marry them um and really what does that mean it's it's also saying that if you were married before that all of those prior marriages were either ended in it they ended uh legally whether it's in the death or divorce or or what or annulment or what have you um there isn't an international database of everybody's marital status so this is basically the best thing that can happen um, by proving it by this affidavit and also showing those prior certificates that establish the person's eligible, eligible to marry. Um, there's some other things you have to do. Um, so we'll move over to the next, the next slide. Um, so they must have met, the, the next bullet was they have to have met within the last two years in person. Now, during COVID, that was a problem because there was a lot of travel restrictions, right? Um, but now it shouldn't be much of a problem. And also, if you couldn't meet in one of your own countries, a lot of fiancés find ways, find ways to meet in another country. Um, and so that's the other way, the other workaround. So um, you need to be able to prove that you've met in the last two years. And there are there's an exceptional waiver. There's a waiver for that if you haven't met in the last two years. But um, I really tried to not use that exception um, unless I have to um, because of, 
you know, it made more sense during COVID, but now it doesn't make as much sense. Um, you also need to be able to prove that um, the U.S. citizen financially um, will be able to to support them in in the future. Um, okay. And the other thing is, is that it can be a same sex relationship as well. I don't know if I need to say that or not, but um, in the U.S., um, they federally that that is um, recognized for immigration now. So um, that that's another consideration. OK, so what is a fiance is someone you're, you're planning to get married to. <laughs> so next slide. Um, so documents needed. So you need to prove that U.S. citizen. Um, is a U.S. citizen, usually with a birth certificate, a passport, or something along those lines. You want a copy of the passport, proof of meeting. So that could mean um, passport tr stamps, trips, uh, airplane tickets, uh, friends with family, or some type of a ceremony or something like that. Um, trips of you two together in other countries or wherever you met up. Um, sworn statements that you're going to intend to marry and that you're that it's a real relationship and you're legally able to marry. You need some passport style photos of always birth certificate of the, the fiance. Um, you need a, a valid passport of the fiance, intending immigrant fiance. You're going to want to have enough time on that to get it for the visa appointment, but also um, to have enough time to, to travel. The biggest thing you want to note is that at the time of the visa appointment, whenever that is, you're going to want to make sure that you have more than six months on your visa valid. Uh, I mean, on your passport valid so that you um, that that's generally the general rule that you want to have more than six months so that when they put you the visa, there's plenty of time for you um, to get here into the country. All right. So moving um, on to police clearance record. OK, this can be annoying. Uh, you need to get a police clearance record for everywhere that you've lived in the last six months for six months or more in every country that you've lived in. So if you've lived in lots of countries, you're going to have to get that. And that could be pretty onerous if, you know, if you don't live in those countries anymore and you're trying to dig up, like, how do I find a police clearance record for this? Um, so, so anyway, that's just something to consider because we don't have like an international, uh, it, background check database, if you will. And so this is the, the workaround by making you go get these police clearance records. That can take some time, so keep that in consideration. And then moving on to money parts, uh, affidavit of support in the I-134, and this is showing that the U.S. citizen makes enough money to support you and will be able to, to step in um, at, as needed. Um, and not become a public charge. And then the other consideration is that they need to show the most recent tax returns of the U.S. citizen. Um, there technically isn't a, what do you say, joint sponsor for the I-134, but if you had to, you could show some uh, financial support from, um, if you have some, if you don't make enough on your own uh, to be able to get some supplemental support. So it just, it's more of a case by case basis. Now, um, moving on to, so these are the general documents needed and also showing as much proof of that relationship. So if you're talking over um, chat or WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever, you're going to want to collect a lot of that. We take out the really gooey, you know, mushy stuff and we don't want to have any like, you know, you know, photos that we don't want anybody else to see, you know, just, um, but, you know, being in this line of work, we have seen things that we want to unsee, but we know that people are keeping that relationship alive, um, uh, remotely uh, over long distances. So, um, but the really showing that constant communication is really an, important. So the application steps to go over that would be first, uh, we'll have a consult review that you're eligible, all that good stuff. But then this is, once you're ready to rock and roll, this is what it would be. Um, one, you file the I-129F. Now, um, online, just looking right now, California Service Center is saying they're working on April 2021. So that's about a year, a year wait. Um, so you've got to keep that in consideration uh, that there could, it could be some significant wait time. And, and a lot of couples uh, find ways to meet up in other countries or travel back, back and forth um, as needed. Um, then the other, once the I-129F is approved, 
let's see, I'm just double checking all the processing locations, but um, then you're going to be scheduled. Um, you need to do the DS-160. This is a, like a, where have you lived and worked, any problems with the law? And then it'll, um, you'll also be submitting the I-134 and then you'll be scheduled for a, um, for a visa appointment. Um, once you get a visa appointment, then you'll get some more instructions, but basically the gist of it is you'll go get a medical exam and at the medical exam, you're going to, uh, they're going to ask you questions about, do you have any al alcohol, drug, um, marijuana usage, any issues with the law? Um, do you have any gang tattoos? Do you have TB or any um, communicable diseases? Um, they also have to show your vaccination records and be able to uh, show demonstrate that you've done your COVID vaccines. And um, and so so for some people, if they don't haven't done that, or if they um, don't have records of their vaccines, this can be a little bit of a speed bump. So making sure you're ready for that is important. And there's a list of all the vaccines that are needed, so you can plan about that in advance. At the interview, which is um, I would say maybe step two, you know, B or two A, let's say uh, somewhere in between step two and three at that interview, um, they're going to ask you questions about the relationship. Um, I've seen, uh, it wasn't my case in the beginning, but where it was denied because they didn't have answers about the relationship. They couldn't say who their best friend was or what their hobby was. Um, and, and so the case, um, we ended up getting them married and then doing the whole case over again. But, um, you know, don't assume that just because the I-129F got approved that the I, uh, that the, con the interview is going to get approved. OK, that's a big that's a big thing you need to keep in note. So at that interview, we usually have prepped our clients, just remind them of questions that might be asked. Make sure you come with more proof of the relationship since you were su submitted the I-129F, which, as we just said, might be over a year um, while you've been waiting. And um, be be prepared to for any particular questions. Um, there's some questions that, that are off that are not supposed to ask or inappropriate, but like be able to explain more and be knowledgeable about your fiance. Um, and then so if it's approved, you'll get a visa in your passport. They'll hold on to your passport usually for a couple of days or so, put it in there, um, and then give you a packet. You generally have about um, six months um, or less to get to the U.S. And now, again, that's why it's important to have a visa, a passport that is valid for enough time. And then when you come to the U.S., when that magic day of coming to the U.S. and you get that stamp in your passport, that's when you want to make sure that you have a plan to get married within 90 days. Um, and um, so so that's that's really important now. But some people um, get really focused on, oh, my wedding and when I'm going to have my wedding and this and this and that. Well, because you don't know when it's going to happen, you just sort of have to roll with it. You might want to have like a justice of a peace judge type of a, a wedding um, and then schedule I mean, marriage. And then and then you might want to schedule a wedding later on when you have more time. Um, my my husband and I were not um, fiance, but. Uh, in the process. But what we did was because we didn't know, uh, we were trying to get international friends and family to the to wedding. We we got married with a justice of a peace uh, or a judge. It was a judge. Yeah. In Austin, <laughs> at the capital. Um, and and then a year later, we did a church wedding. Um, we had gotten friends in from um, from Turkey, Mexico. My brother had flown in from Brazil. Um, all over the U.S. And so it, it took quite an, a big deal to get everybody in. But anyway, so j that's OK. That's that's completely OK. So sometimes you just have to roll roll with it and make your own traditions. So um, we usually call the marriage the first time and the wedding the second time. Um, it gets a little confusing because they're a year uh, 364 days apart. So but anyway, um, anyway, so. Moving on. So does my U.S. citizen fiance need to file separate petitions? So for your children. So if you're a fiance and you have um, minor unmarried children, um, your U.S. citizen fiance can petition for you and your minor children uh, on the I-129F all, all together. But when they um, and you list all the children and all the birth certificates and all the proof of all that. But then you're going to need um, separate visa applications when you're doing the National Visa Center visa appointment. Um, and so because each person has to get their own visa and their passport. And then those minors will become K-2s. Um, and um, so we can move to the next slide. 
this is where I usually like to make the joke about the canine is your dog that you bring in, but um, I don't know if that's <laughs> a good joke or not. But um, you know, there's so many letters and numbers, and so uh, it's it's uh, it's it's a geeky immigration nerdy jokes, right? So fun fact: what what is our <laughs> what's our fun fact here, Daya? The um, 90 Day Fiance that show. Um, yeah, it's like. It's actually, it's a show that has a lot of uh, attention, but it actually is like legit. It's a, like where the K one and the reason why it's called 90 Day Fiance is because of the 90 Day Rule. Yeah, um, I think I was reached out by by them like a long, long time ago because they were trying to find potential like clients who were coming. Um, but but anyway, I I think I can boast that I think I've never watched more than like one minute of that show. I think I would probably be upset if I watched it because I would be like, no, that's not real. That's not true. You know, like that's why I can't no. really watch the proposal or the Gerard Depardieu um, green card movie, you know, cause like, it's just, it's all legally wrong. So it, it'd probably be like a doctor watching, you know, the, um, what's it called? You know, a doctor. The like Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy, right. Exactly. Uh, you don't do that. <laughs> I, I think you should make a show about your experience with your husband. And talk about, guys, fun fact, the immigration officer that was conducting the interview thought attorney Powers was the one who needed the green card. Well, yeah, she thought that I was the beneficiary. Um, and uh, I, it, it, we were like in there for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. And then she, I don't know. I don't know what was going on. But um, I was like, I'm I'm the American here. I'm petitioning for this guy, you know. But um, yeah, I mean, he thinks he has an accent. And I was like, I don't really think you do. You 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 were passing for a U.S. citizen right. um, back then. But but anyway, um, so that was our fun fact. <laughs> That's good that was our fun fact that the name is actually it it has some facts to it. Yeah. Um. Well, so. Fiance visas. Well, I mean, that's the that's it in a nutshell. Um, I I sort of told you some things that could be issues. Um, you need to make sure you've seen each other in the last two, physically the last two years. You need to keep that relationship going. I went to an F could be approved, but it might not be the visa might be denied at the consulate. You need to be able to show the financial support um, and that you're legally able to marry. If you petition for other fiancés in the past, um, I think if it's been more than like a couple, uh, they could give you a higher scrutiny. Um, and so they, you know, they also ask like, how did you meet? Um, there's certain, a lot of things are online, um, mm -hmm. but, but um, there, you're not supposed to meet on some marriage broker site, That that's a problem. So, but I mean, a lot of people are meeting on dating apps anyway. So as long as it's, um, it's, it's a legitimate one, um, and it's not a marriage broker site, it's fine. Um, and anyway, I mean, this is just a great process. I think you just need to know that it can take a while. And at the medical, it's also important that the individual um, doesn't have any inadmissible issues. And so, um, you know, marijuana might be legal in some countries, but um, it's federally, it's not, it's not legal. And it's, you can come into a problem on immigration matters. Um, and, and so that's important to screen for, for all of that at the time of the consultation and also being prepared for the interview. But other than that, um, I think that that sums it up. So how can people stay in touch and find out more? And what are we talking about next week? Oh, yeah, we're actually are talking about that marijuana subject. But oh. if you guys want to stay connected with us, you guys can um, add us on Facebook and Twitter at Ruby Powers Law or subscribe to our newsletter that can be found on our website. We also have an Instagram and a TikTok. Our TikTok is Powers Immigration Lawyer, and we always have good content going out on there. Every day we're posting. Some are funny, some are educational, but Ruby is really good about just being open to everything. So <laughs> we love that. And then this is our schedule for the month of May. Um, our next webinar, actually, for next Wednesday, is going to be how does marijuana usage affect your case? And then next Wednesday, it would be criminal records and your immigration case. And the last webinar for the month of May would be latest on USCIS premium processing times. So we will have a lot of good information going out this month. So if you guys want to stay updated, just go ahead and have us on your social media. But thank you all so much for joining us today, and we will see you guys next Wednesday. See you next time.